We have Raging Bolt, we have Amoongus, Incineroar, Urshifu, Rapid Strike, and we are already getting into it. And now they're going straight into the battle. It's going to be Zane versus Steven. Intimidate already being very relevant with two physical attackers really taking the brunt of this Intimidation. I feel like this is the first time today we're really seeing Intimidate be like actually relevant. Yeah. A bunch of special attackers getting intimidated, but now we're seeing you know two real physical attackers taking it here. Um, fake out. Uh, is going to be in the hands of... That's going to be, of course, Incineroar running that, but who else? Is it going to be the opposing Incineroar as well? Yes, so both Incineroars running the fake out. Iron Hands also. So we're going to see a potential three fake out there. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of fake out potential out. here. Raging What's bolt. interesting here is there is that Terra from Zane. I'm assuming on the Urshifu. Yeah, that Terra Urshifu. Yeah. We have got us a Ghost Bear on the field. It's Ghost Bear time so that from Steven. Trying to block one of those three Intimidates that could possibly come out. No, that's Zane. They're both running Urshifu Rapid Strike. But the fake out gets called out once again. Steven made this play. Actually, no. Steven made this play before, but now Zane's doing it with the Ghost uh, Urshifu into the Surging There's Strike. Surging Strike. And Sinor are probably going to go down here. Most, most likely. Steven already not too favored on this new side of the field gonna lose his first Pokemon here and now yeah the roar of victory look at him that Urshifu <laughs> is very proud of what he's accomplished force to switch in now the Calyrex is gonna be his next pick I think that makes sense here you want to try to get some momentum back in your favor and if it means bringing out your restricted mom so be it you don't really have any setup potential on your team anyways you don't have like an Amoongus sitting there rage powdering so yeah. if it means meeting offense with offense Go for it. Yeah. We are going to see the Terra Ghost from the Calyrex here. Getting that Grass type Terra, blocking that super effective, sur blocking the Surging Strikes, blocking all of those different attack moves. Actually going for the Glacial Lance. Thinking what to do. We're going to see the Dragon Pulse onto the. Uh, no, rethinking. Terra Grass, Glacial Lance. Into the Dragon Pulse to try and take out that Urshifu. Urshifu switches out. I mean, as always, there's no such thing as an easy decision against these competitors. The Amoongus so is here. Gotta really contemplate, but Amoongus is out here. No wide guard, of course, so, you know, Calyrex is actually going to be able to be a threat. We didn't really get to see that much yeah. in the last game, and it's going to Terra into Grass. Yeah. And uh, that's going to help it resist. We'll see how much damage it does to Amoongus here. Something. <laughs> Dragon Pulse coming out, yeah. doing blocks, a good amount of damage. Blocks the fighting type attacks from Iron Hands. Okay, it there blocks it the water type attacks from Urshifu. Terra Grass is really strong here. Here's the Glacial Lance. No stab. Amoongus goes down. Amoongus came out, said hello, and left once again through the vents. I am very happy to see that. I'm very much not a fan of Amoongus. Uh, it is such an annoying Pokemon to deal with, and all the things it can do can really drag things to a halt. But now Zane, really not going to have that very important part of his team there to rely on. Um, it is a strong Pokemon. It is very strong. Losing it this early means that now sleep isn't a factor here. They're both down one for one, and they both lost support mons, and now we're seeing both of the horses facing off against each other. Except yeah. this Calyrex is already buffed. Yeah, the, Cal the Ice Rider is buffed. It is also in Trick Room. Steven's in a great position. He will have to see what he does. He's going to go... Is he in Trick Room? I thought he Trick Room. I guess not. He does not have Trick Room up. I am wrong. Trick Room is not up. Okay, this is where the Ice Rider really starts to kind of overcome against the Cali or the uh, Shadow Rider, where, you know, the Ice Rider can withstand some hits from the uh, Shadow Rider. doesn't work the other way around. So he's comfortable just taking a turn to Trick Room, yeah. maybe take a hit from the uh, Shadow Rider. Oh, the Snarl's going to do a lot. Ash of Barrage is coming out as well. Raging Bolt takes it. Calyrex takes they it. Both take it There's a the Snarl. It's huge. Ton of damage. Calyrex drops its special attack, which is horrible for it. Glacial Urshifu Lance is probably special wiping. attack going down. Glacial Lance probably wipes both of them. Yeah. Um, especially since he's no longer a water type. He is a ghost. Official he is a ghost. ghost. And, you know, he's been taken into the fold, one of our fellow ghost types. And uh, Thunderclap, Glacial Lance. This. 
I mean, he still has Iron Hands in the back line. Yeah. But I can't see either of these Pokemon taking any more damage. No, I don't think you can protect both these Pokemon. Gonna protect the Calyrex. Do we see a double protect? I don't think this Urshifu has protect. It does not. There's the Glacial Lance. It's plus two now. After taking out this Urshifu. Yes. Urshifu goes down. We now have a plus two Calyrex on the field. <laughs> yes. It's getting scarier by the minute here, folks. You can feel the chill coming and entering the room. I'm, hey, you know, besides ghost types, I always love me some ice types too. That's why Glalie is one of my favorite, okay? And uh, love to see ice types finally fighting success in this new generation. Not even needing to use that hail change. Ice Rider just being such a strong Pokemon in its own respects here. Iron Hand's coming out, but even a Pokemon this tanky, I don't think is going to be very comfortable taking a plus two. No, a plus rest. two is real scary. Half HP too. It's looking pretty, pretty set in stone here, or rather set in ice. Yeah. In. You can feel the cold air coming in as Steven gets a little bit more comfortable. And there's the Glacial Lance. It picks up the final two KOs. Ice Rider, the true hero of that battle, as it knocked out all four Pokemon that game. Yeah, MVP for sure. Get this guy a raise, you know, give him a vacation on a cruise or something. Give him some kind of accolade for his accomplishment here against Zane in game one. Steven, try not to get too excited. You still got a long way to go, and uh, you got to make sure you're staying focused, staying ready. Love to see that focus coming right back to uh, Steven here in this game. But as we get ready to head into this next one, like, there's a lot of adjustments that can be made for both of these participants, but... I really doubt we're seeing Calyrex going anywhere. No, I think both Calyrex will still be there. I wouldn't be shocked if we see Zane actually bring Tornadus to this matchup and maybe drop Amoongus. I think Tornadus and that Bleak Windstorm, as much as Bleak Windstorm is a risky move, mm. you know Pelipper will be there, so you know that probably Rain will go back up and Bleak Windstorm will become 100% accurate. It is Terra Dark, so even though it is flying type, Glacial Lance would be super scary against it. But if you really want to, you can commit to Terra. Better off, you're probably more favored at just not switching the Tornadus into the Calyrex at all and yeah. letting it be your kind of initial starter. Maybe even as a lead, you could just immediately Rain Dance or even, uh, does it have Tailwind up? Or it does It does get Tailwind. Tailwind gets, and Rain Dance. Yeah, if that Tailwind goes up and you can pre uh, prevent the Trick Room from going up, you're in a great position there. Mm -hmm. So it's got Tailwind, Bleak Wind, Protect, and Rain Dance. So its only damaging move is Bleak Wind. Um, I think... Hmm. If he does lead with Tornadus, who else did he lead with? Did he, lead, he, he led with Urshifu, right? Yeah. So you won't even need to get Tailwind up. You could just go straight into Rain Dance. Maybe even Protect if we see a situation where there's a bunch of fake outs coming yeah. out again. Um, but I think that Tornadus is actually going to be a solid starter. Yeah, I think if Rain Dance goes up, it's going to be a very powerful... You have a very powerful Urshifu on your side with all those rapid strikes. Mm -hmm. It could uh, it could actually threaten the uh, Calyrex in the first turn. Um, oh, absolutely. Plus, with um, the Tornadus kind of absorbing some attention, it might even be a very potent threat and distraction. But we're seeing the lead. It's actually going to be Urshifu and uh, Shadow Rider versus the uh, Incineroar and Ice Rider. Very yeah. similar leads. So both horses are going to start off on their sides of the field. The two abilities combined into one with that earn nerve locking down berries, which is the interesting thing is we can't see, we won't see berries much in this regulation G. But that's the thing with abilities like unnerve and um, inner focus, stuff like that. It's like, do I really care if I'm not going to flinch or if they're not going to eat berries? But when you care, you really care. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the real threat of these moves. Shrek Room, again. I, actually, I don't know. I feel like that last game, the Trick Room was solid because he was very comfortable absorbing the hit from um, those Pokemon. But I feel like here, I don't know if you can afford to get hit by both of these Pokemon. But he is banking on the Fake Out, potentially. But once again, we do see the Terrastalization into the Ghost Type. So yeah. he went to Fake Out onto the Urshifu, but it's a Ghost Type now. Fake Out's not going to come out. You have two Ghost Types now hitting you on your uh, Ice Rider, at least I'm assuming, but yeah. we are seeing the Terra here into the Grass Type. So Surge Strikes assume, yeah. might not be that effective. I, I still don't know. I feel like it's still pretty scary. Yeah, it's really hard to call what's going to happen here. Are we going to see the full out attack off turn one? There's the Fake Out into the Ghost Bear. Doesn't do anything. 
There's the U-turn. Ooh. Super effective damage. Not a ton of damage, but enough to get Urshifu out of trouble here. Both players reading each other. Uh, I really didn't expect this turn to play out like this, honestly. No. <laughs> but this is how it's going here. Maybe we, you're going to even see High Horsepower come out instead of uh, Glacial Lands, just because why not? Actually, no, he did Trick Room, right? He committed to the yeah. Trick Room. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Basically, if he survives this turn, he's guaranteeing Shadow Rider goes down next. Oh, turn. yeah. Shadow Rider is in a very scary position here. You have to be very careful. You do not want to lose Shadow Rider too early here. In any case, that might just have to happen if things keep going the route they are right now. Incineroar is going to be next to come out. Intimidate, not going to be really relevant because of the clear amulet. Once again, I always get excited to see, oh, but the Intimidate, but then I see, oh yeah, clear amulet. Here's so. the Astral Barrage. And it's moment of truth here. If you knock it out, you knock it out, but you're definitely not going to. Not Gets even down do below that. half. That's, important. That's an important stat here. It is pretty big. And with the Incineroar coming out to threaten the Fake Out. Yeah, that could be huge. Yeah, the fake out is really scary. You do not want to take another faked out Astral Barrage. So he is going to protect, which mm -hmm. I do not disagree with. And we are going to see good old Moongus probably hit the field here. But now you have to really assume that this is kind of the obvious play. You don't, like, he's probably assuming he's going to go for the protect. So then if you're going to go for the protect, it's because you're assuming that they're both going to try to go for your one guy. Yeah. So they're assuming you're going to switch in. So maybe they're actually kind of pivoting into your switch in instead, right? You have to protect on Calyrex, but Zane does not have to hit the Calyrex. No. So that's a lot of moving parts to this puzzle here. We'll have to see what happens. Calyrex goes back. Shadow Rider is getting out of dodge. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Again, he did not have to hit him. He just had to put him in a position where he has no choice but to protect. There's yeah. no universe where you don't protect here. It's just too risky. So he has to protect. That's going to give him the opportunity. In fact, he didn't even fake out onto the Calyrex. He faked out onto the Moons because he knows he doesn't have to. He's just taking this opportunity two free turns. And uh, that's going to allow him to get his Shadow Rider out and get his, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of chip damage onto a Moongus. Yeah. Um, I believe that Steven switching his Ice Rider out is a little too low to be too comfortable here. It's not boosted by anything. It, the only thing that you got to worry about is the fact that Trick Room is up and every turn that goes by, it's ticking down. So you're not going to have as much value out of that Trick Room as you otherwise would like to. But it's better to do that than to lose your, your Ice Rider. Yeah, you really got to protect. You really are going to lose those Trick Room terms. I don't know if they'll come back, which is scary because you know that that Astral Barrage will will finish off Calyrex. Spore goes into Iron Hands here. Iron Hands is going to take that nap for us. See who comes in next. Oh, this is such a scary thing to consider here. Both Incineroars here. <laughs> Who's going to go? There's the taunt. Okay. Onto the Amoogus. Like Amoogus can no longer Spore. Sleep time is over. Does it run any? It, it is running Pollen Puff at the very least. So it's not going to be doing absolutely nothing. But I feel like switching itself is just scary. Yes. Because whatever you switch is probably going to eat a parting shot. And if you don't switch, then you're stuck with an Incineroar. <laughs> yeah. And you don't want that. No. So Raging Bolt comes out here to take the field to relieve Amoongus from that taunt. Mm -hmm. And that's probably going to be a parting shot onto the Raging Bolt. If uh, Zane made the correct read, which I wouldn't be surprised. Iron Hand wakes up, only one, one turn to sleep. Unbelievable. Incineroar takes a ton of damage here that it did not want to take. There's the knockoff. Goodbye to Assault Vest. Hello to a lot more damage for the rest of this game. Knockoff coming out onto the Incineroar. No more safety goggles, which could really become relevant, actually. Yeah, I mean, sleep is up. Sleep is back on the table. So Amoongus is going to take the field again. What are we going to see? We're going to see Snarl here is my guess, but maybe not. Okay, Volt Switch actually does make a lot of sense. It's just a lot of pivoting going on between these players. But again, at this point, it, it, I feel like the Switch plays just add a, an extra layer of complexity and fear to anything you do. Because getting run, one wrong Switch or one predicted Switch could spell the end of your game completely. Yeah. There's the parting shot into the Amoongus, which really Amoongus does not care about. Yep, you're very happy with this. You're very content with this. This is probably exactly what he was hoping to get. The parting shot into his lesser or less relevant Pokemon, forcing the uh, Incineroar out. So now you don't have to worry too much about these parting shots, uh, switch out shenanigans much more. 
Um, and now you're going to have to actual, real, credible threats that you can deal with instead of the threat of threats. And now it's at half HP. And Among Us, can you do Spore? Because Trick Room is still up. Yeah, Trick Room is up. Taunt. I think Trick Room might go down this turn, but Taunt is now off the table again until Incineroar comes back out. I would actually like to see the Incineroar come back in. Does yes. Calyrex come back in? I think Calyrex is going to come is. back in. Hope okay. for a Puff to heal back up some HP. Oh, that's, that would be huge. That would actually be huge. I don't know if he can threaten the Calyrex with these two Pokemon. Trick Room goes down, so now's the question. Oh, that's... That's okay. That's huge. It's gonna be close. He does have that rage powder to reset okay. up Trick Room. Okay, he's got that. Yeah, no spread moves coming out from these Pokemon. That could be exactly what he needs. If he can survive this turn, he might have just cleared himself a path through victory in a very unconventional way. Getting yeah. this heal onto this Calyrex would actually be insanely beneficial to Steven. And uh, with that Trick Room being back up in that same turn as well, he could heal his Calyrex into a Glacial Lance that his opponent could do nothing about. Yeah, it's it's gonna be really down to the wire. His own Calyrex could be coming out once again, or is it gonna be the Incinero? Yeah. The other Calyrex is coming back out. Just been ringing around the rosy. We're right back to square one, it feels. Except this time we got a mushroom here. Rage There's powder the rage powder. Out. Again, making the most of the fact that you have an idea of what your opponent's gonna be doing. You know you can't really do anything about it, so you just play around it as best as possible. He's gonna switch in his uh, Shadow Rider just to threaten things once again, and he's gonna pivot out, doing as much damage as he possibly could have that turn with that U turn, as well as getting the pivot. Um, probably well, Incineroar. Incineroar probably, probably takes the field again. This one however, does not have safety goggles anymore. So this actually, once again, could be relevant. It could be the case, however, with that fake out being usable once again, this would force the Rage Powder instead of the Pollen Puff. There's a lot of factors at play here. There's so Zane's got to make, or Steven has to make an incredible read here. I don't even what think it, happens? I don't even think if it's going to be a read. I think he just has to kind of accept the fact that his plan no longer is going to work. He yeah. can't heal this. Uh, he can't heal this Calyrex anymore, unless he goes for the protect. But there's that so many up? different options down this pathway. But if he does that, then that gives Shadow Rider a turn to set up. He's but going to spoil the Shadow Rider. Shadow Rider does not have protect. Shadow Rider does have protect. I am wrong. Oh, this just makes this is, things so much more complicated. This is such an insane game, too. You can see why <laughs> these two players have made it to the Grand Finals today. Oh, man. I have the benefit of, like, not being in this situation. And even I'm getting a headache just contemplating all the options. Yeah, Calyrex gets the Protect. Fake Out's going to come out. Fake Out. So no Spore. No Spore this turn. Probably going to be Nasty Plot coming out. No, Astral Barrage. Astral Barrage. That's actually, that, okay, no, protected. Okay, <laughs> scared me for a second. Scared me for a second. Okay, it is protected. So it's just gonna be this Amoongus taking it. Amoongus ah, lives. Ah, that's not good. <laughs> Amoongus lives, Fake Out is off the table. Glacial protect. Lance is, <laughs> is available. Protect off the table as well. More importantly. Palm Puff into the Calyrex. You want to just go all into the Calyrex. Fake out was the issue there. Yeah. That's not an issue anymore. You can heal up your Calyrex. You're still in this, and you can just completely demolish the uh, opposing Incineroar. Yeah. And even if Calyrex, basically you get one free turn on this Calyrex. That's so much health. It's full I didn't HP. think it would restore that much health. It's full HP. Calyrex is back up to full HP. If you, basically, if Zane goes for a nasty plot, that just is the alarm that uh, Steven needs to know he has to start attacking it. Yeah. There's the Astral Barrage. Amoongus oh. goes down. Calyrex is still in a great position at plus one. But they're both at plus one now. So Both at plus one. Zane has the speed advantage. So Nasty Plot is not even necessary anymore. Next Astral Barrage will knock out this Ice Rider. Yeah. But will you get a turn? That's the question. That's the question. Here comes Incineroar. No fake out because it's Ghost. But both both of the Pokemon switching in both have fake out. Oh, Eric. What do you do? What do you do? Eric, both of these Pokemon <laughs> have fake out. Oh. One of them can't get hit by fake out though. So this might be forcing Steven to protect again. Wait, which would another allow turn of trick room. Another turn of trick room, which would allow him to knock out the Incineroar. Yep. With the Astral Barrage, which would threaten if he doesn't protect, <laughs> it would knock out the Ice Rider, so he's forced to protect. Switching in would just 
be a free KO, right? Onto the uh, Raging Bull. Bolt. This is wild. I, is... I don't know what you do here. It's, it really is. This is, this is like the Pokemon battles you I see in the anime. Out. It faked out the Incineroar though. Okay. And it's a crit too. The Glacial Lance. Lance, does it knock out? It, I think it does. Counter no, with the, the I forgot about the Focus Sash. I completely forgot about the Focus Sash. I forgot about that Sash. Oh, and you can't, oh, you can't do that because you couldn't fake out the counter. Oh my God. That's a double KO. Folks, we are going to a game three. Oh, wow. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> this is why I tell everybody that Pokemon is the best strategy game out there. Yeah. You don't see this in chess, okay? What an absolutely insane play by Zane. I totally forgot that the Focus Sash was on the table. Yeah. I completely forgot about that fact. So when I was saying that you get one free turn because of this Trick Room, forcing Calyrex into set up to be a threat, you don't have to worry about that anymore because he gets a plus one and because he has Sash. So yeah. you, it's, it's, uh We'll see what happens there. Raging Bolt's gonna go for the Snarl. Iron Hands comes back. Wait, does he get the double knockout here? He actually might because he, I forgot he is slower. Yeah. Than both. He is still slower with the double K. Oh, but the Protect and Trick Room ends after this turn for sure. Does so he does have, but he still has a uh, thunderclap. Thunder he has thunderclap. He has thunderclap. So this <laughs> knocks. But he has Iron Hands still. This is why he switched it out. Oh my god. This is why he switched it out. So he can bring back the Iron Hands. Oh wow. This is insane, folks. Wow. We this are. Is Absolutely insane. Twelve is it added progress? We are so sorry. <laughs> Twelve dimensional gameplay. Yeah, honestly. But how much is Iron Hands at? It is. It is pretty low. But unlike Calyrex, this doesn't buff itself every time it gets a knockout. No. So, <laughs> but does Iron Hand? It has fake out. <laughs> oh. Out. And there's no protect. No protect. So the best he could do is try to thunderclap one of them. Yeah, but that's not going to work. So There's that's going to be an Astro out. Barrage. There's the Astro Barrage. Triple boost. Folks, we are going to a game three. Beautiful. <laughs> Very oh my good God. play coming up from both of these competitors. Zane completely navigating that minefield masterfully. And this is why Focus Sash is an item, <laughs> yeah, I think. That, oh. Wow, I completely, I can't, I completely forgot about Focus Sash. Yeah, and this is the benefit. Wow, this is <laughs> why, this is why, wow, this is why Shadow Rider being weaker is actually a benefit because Sash becomes relevant. You don't have to run Clear Amulet because guess what? Intimidate doesn't affect special attack, so no. you don't have to worry about Intimidate you're allowed to run an item that doesn't do what Clear Amulet does, yeah. which is Focus Sash. Oh, wow. That is, there's so, <laughs> there's so many things. Most of it, not even most of it, so much of it before the battle even starts, which yeah. is what's this Pokemon's weakness? So what item am I gonna use to supplement it? Even just that decision alone, influencing so much in this battle because imagine you like you wouldn't run focus ash on ice rider you don't need it no you run not clear amulet but you do oh wow okay you know this is this is absolutely incredible. insane and we're going to get ready for the for game three what a better way to cap off day one than a game three match this is the first game three we're seeing i'm pretty sure yeah folks we are going we are going to be here all weekend playing pokemon all weekend yes tomorrow we're going to have even more players even more players tomorrow and sunday starting at two at starting around 1 30 tomorrow so you do not want to miss it if you want more intense pokemon action for all sure. of these players fighting for a chance to get to worlds to go to hawaii to challenge to be the number one pokemon player in the world absolutely and if you want to know more about when we're doing events and all kinds of stuff like that of course join the saints gaming discord or follow the saints gaming ca twitter to know about all the events that we're doing all the time so make sure you're staying tuned with us here and you're staying tuned with us there but don't forget all about the action that's going to be right here right now as we're heading to this final game of today's tournament of this four day event calyrex is both of them leading the charge and i just realized again that calyrex didn't take a single point of damage up until that point so nope. even if it did wow yeah. and pelipper is on the field pelipper is an incredibly scary pokemon here for zane to have to face down it's got that tr it's got that wide guard which really just shuts down calyrex as an option what's well, unfortunate to remember however is this is also buffing the urshifu yeah 
um, whether or not you're going to terrestrialize into the grass type, you still need to worry about taking that huge damage. But, oh yeah, so okay, never mind. I was going to say, why do you want the Wide Guard? But I forgot that um, Shadow Rider actually is using a spread move as well. Yes, with Astro Barrage yes. there. Yes, uh, but what's unfortunate to remember is right now there is no Trick Room up. So Nasty Plot is viable. Nasty Plot is an option. Trick Room will go up as long as the Ice Rider survives. So that is the scary thing to think about here. That is true. Wide Guard goes however. up. Will it be useful this turn? We shall see. Because Nasty Plot would make There's it so that. There's the U-turn. Does a good bit of damage to Calyrex. That is a scary amount of damage. What a good read there from Zane. Yeah, we're in a very similar situation to where we were before. And I have a bad feeling that this one play is going to be hugely relevant to the rest of the game. Ripple yeah. effects are going to be... Uh, Incineroar is here. Belt. Incineroar is here. Clear Amulet doing so much There's work the Psy Shock. It does not go for... Wide Guard does not go into effect. Pelipper still hangs on. Low HP. Trick and Trick Room goes up. Slow gamers rise up now. It's their turn to play. They get the initiative. They might be low HP, but they're still high in spirit. They can use the Protect here to buy himself one more turn, but do you want to do that? Once again, the kind of mining game that comes into play here when it comes to whether or not you go for the uh, like a, a setup move versus just going for an attack is you have a turn to work with against the Shadow Rider where you have to has to use Nasty Plot before it really threatens your Ice Rider. Um, so you can wait a turn to see if it's going to Nasty Plot. Next turn, you're still going to act first. Then you can just take it out and punish it if it does. Unfortunately, yeah. though, what we just remembered from last game is it's using Focus Sash. Yeah, so you have to destroy that Focus Sash sooner rather than later. Incineroar is going to Terra here. We are going to see that Terra Water Incineroar. It's a water, but it is a water tiger time. But no, without Fake Out, it's so committal to try to get any damage onto um, the Shadow Rider. It's going to protect here, but is that going to be relevant? Yes. Fake Out it is. In a protect. Good read by Steven there. But when's the next move coming out, Calibrex? Psy Shock doesn't infect Incineroar. What a switch there. Oh, right. It's Dark type. Okay. Kind of completely forgot about that whole interaction. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. So, Locking the side shock. Let's see what happens here. Glacial Lance is going straight for it. Uh, and it's going to try out into out. the other Incineroar. Will Incineroar switch out and go into something else? What's most likely the read is coming out from here is yes, the protect or end or switch in um, yeah. to a different Pokemon on the side of Zane. Either way, you're happy with it and you'll take it. it seems that Incineroar is just going to stand his ground and uh, just take whatever is going to get thrown at him. Don't have much of a choice. You don't want to do anything too committal. So that's one turn bought for Shadow Rider. How many more turns of Trick Room do we have, though? I don't I think he's know. Only got, I think he's got two turns of Trick Room left. He's got to start dealing damage. Hmm. But any kind of switch-ins, again, it's just so committal. I don't know if you want to. I feel like what you want to do, maybe... I mean, Parting Shot is still a valid threat, but... I mean, your, your Ice Rider could go down. I don't know. It's so hard to predict what's going to happen here. I feel like you just go all out on the offense, just Glacial Lance and hit into the Calyrex slot. Even if it's not hitting Calyrex, it's going to hit something. Yeah, and Calyrex switches out. Something else is coming in. Okay. Smart. It's Urshifu. And How does Urshifu eat a Glacial Lance? Let's see. It is not the strong, defensively the strongest Pokemon. It eats it actually surprisingly well. Pretty well. There's the knockoff. Goodbye to the clear amulet. It is open to intimidates. It is open to part to parting shots. It is open to everything in the book. Parting shot onto the Urshifu, however. Honestly, though, I really don't think it matters that much. The way Urshifu, of course, with the critical strikes, I don't think that's going to be affected by the um, stat change. You could get Pelipper back in, threaten Hurricane. But I think you need Pelipper for later to watch out for Astral Barrage. That's true. Here comes Raging Bolt. Raging Bolt takes the stage. Taking the stage. This is the last turn of Trick Room. You got to get something done here. But we saw that it's not that effective. With Incineroar, it's not running any kind of Protect. So if going for high horsepower, again, you're not even really hitting Incineroar. You're just hitting that slot. If Incineroar stays there, great. You knock it out. If yeah. it switches out, Great, you're, doing, you're hitting something for really decent damage at the very least. You see um, the bolt switch here into the Incineroar, or into the Urshifu slot. Probably, probably trying to bring out Pelipper for next turn. Mm, coming out now. I, just, I Every time I... Incineroar leaves, Incineroar's out of there. 
It can't be the Shadow Rider, it couldn't be. It's the Shadow Rider. It's Iron Hands! Iron Hands is gonna go down! Yeah, for sure. It's gonna take a lot of damage at the very least, and that's gonna be a plus one to the Calyrex if it does go down. So oh, Iron Hands live! It's tanky for sure. Uh, Volt Switch. Huge Fresh food damage. goes down. Huge damage, huge damage. Steven slowly carving his way back into this game here. This is the first Pokemon to go down here, and you don't want it to be your Urshifu. Unfortunately for him, that is definitely going to be the case. We're seeing Iron Hands with the Assault Vest in hand. You could make the read, see if he's going to send in the uh, the Shadow Rider and send out your Pelipper instead, but that means that it's going to be vulnerable to the Iron Hands. Otherwise, switch out your own Incineroar and risk leaving yourself vulnerable to, you know, the yeah. Astral Barrage. And you can't fake out the, the Shadow Rider. So. Rain is gone. Trickrim is gone. We go back to regular speed stats here, folks. I don't know what you do here. There is no right answer, unfortunately, for either of these players. They're, they just have to make the... I can't even say best decision possible. You just have to make the decision that you think is most likely uh, based off of your own internal brain calculations to be in favor based off of what you calculate your opponent's gonna do. Uh, Calyrex is gonna be the back out. Fake out is available to both these players here. But realistically, you can only use it onto the uh, Iron Hands. You could protect with your Calyrex, but then what does that do? That just buys. Um, Shadow Rider, one turn to do whatever it wants, right? Yeah. Oh, such a hard decision to make. And I feel like, unfortunately, this is really the turn where it kind of yeah, comes Yeah, this is going to be the turn that decides who wins, who walks out of this game as the winner. So, you got to make some kind of play. There's the fake out into the Iron Hands. But this, uh, this Incineroar is going to take really good damage here. Astral Barrage, does Astral Barrage get the knockout? Calyrex lives! Okay. Glacial Lance is going to be the play onto both of them. Iron Hands falls and Calyrex is so low, it doesn't go down, which either way, it had the Sash, so it wouldn't have gone down anyways. Chilling Nay, but there's no Trick Room. No so Trick Room. It's not involved. No Trick Room, there's no fake out, there is no anything. There's nothing but the game. Like, there's just, it, this is it. There's no Pelipper for redirection. There is a, where Pelipper's stuck in the back. Pelipper cannot get out here this turn. I don't you think switch, switch out Calyrex and save Calyrex for later. I think you just protect. Protect Calyrex. Yeah. Go for the knockoff. Try to take out Cali Try to take out Shadow Rider. No, he's just gonna commit. Oh. He's gonna commit. But what's the risk reward here, right? Like I think you gotta. I think you gotta protect. I. I. I here we go. But I think that's a prediction that he's there's making. There's the fake out. Incineroar okay. protect. Incineroar gets faked out, and there's the Astral Barrage. Uh huh. Folks, I think that has sealed the game. I don't know. I mean, he still has Raging Bolt. Still has Raging Bolt. It that's, might not be over. That's Thunderclap. He still has Raging Bolt Thunderclap. But that's that's the important thing. Incineroar's still healthy, right? Calyrex is nothing right now. It's at yeah. nothing. Um, which, which Incineroar is faster here? I'm trying to figure this out. 165 on Stevens. Be, uh, levels aren't... Uh, levels but they are not even, even levels. I, I can't make that calculation. <laughs> I don't know sure. that calculation in, my, in the top of my head. <laughs> I uh, do not know which Incineroar is faster here. They both get cut down to 50, right? Yeah. I just don't know how far yeah, they get cut I down to 50. <laughs> okay. So Thunderclap. All right. Thunderclap into but Shadow then, Rider. Thankfully, Raging Bolt's at 100. Yeah. And and let's be real. Incineroar doesn't have any way of threatening this Raging Bolt. Yeah. Beyond a parting shot, which it can't use anymore. Shadow so, Rider uses Protect. Yeah. That's smart, of course. It's a good move. But... Volt, Volt switch. switch. Oh, that's the, goes down. the game. That's, that's going to be the game. Steven winning this one out, unless we see something insane and I crazy wish. and scary. Yeah, Shadow Rider has got to do it. Got to get like, I uh, don't know what Shadow Rider does here. Has to avoid both attacks and crit with uh, Astral Barrage. And Pelipper's back out with the ride with the wide guard. Right. Does Zane have any tricks left up his sleeve? There's the knockoff into the protect. <laughs> Very scary stuff indeed for both these players, but based off what we're seeing, based off of numbers. Battle is canceled, folks. Your winner for day one is Steven Stark and Ice Rider Calyrex. Ice Rider Calyrex. I really can't even say that 
this was uh, like a surprise just based off of how the interactions were made, the teams were built, items, everything, all the different factors, minute details really just lent the edge to Ice Rider in these matchups. Yeah. So, but Zane, real honestly, I would say the way these matchups were kind of played, it favored Ice Rider a lot. But yeah. Zane really stretched out the utility of the Shadow Rider to like the maximum degree, which is so impressive, all things considered. Yeah. Steven had some great usage there. Steven made an incredible comeback and really swept through those final rounds to beat Zane. Zane. Here's the interesting thing. Zane Cade thir third in our last piece in our last midseason showdown. He is now second. Will he get first tomorrow? <laughs> Maybe. Back? That's the question. Maybe indeed. Maybe he might even switch up his team for tomorrow. You know, it's it's a different day, it's a different tournament. You can use whatever team you want. Maybe he's gonna be running Spiracle. You that's never true. know, right? There's so many different things to consider. And again, that's the beauty of Pokemon. There's so many ways you can play, so many creative strategies, and there is never a right answer. It's only just try and see yeah. if it works such a great very great way to play from both of these players yeah what an incredible matchup and this is only the start we'll see more players tomorrow and we'll see more players on sunday and the battles will get even more intense as there are more points available by the more players we have exactly playing so again congratulations to steven and calyrex ice rider taking the first win of the weekend and congratulations to all of the players for sure everyone putting on such a great show for us it's a great community out there so much passion for the game so much passion for the community as well so for anybody who's coming tomorrow the day after the day after that or who can't come at all but wishes you were here very excited to have you on board but with all of that being said ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for tuning in and we hope you have a fantastic day because tomorrow it's going to be a big one, so make sure you get a lot of rest. But don't you sleep talk. You'll run out of PP for tomorrow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Daniil, joined by... My Veneric. We'll see you all at 1.30 tomorrow for the start of day two. Take care.